I uh, want to talk about trapped a little bit. Uh, this this started uh, uh, if I if I just start to talk a little bit about myself. I had um, been uh, a writer for a few years and written uh, several uh, drama series in Iceland that that didn't uh, I mean was just uh, broadcast in Iceland and some parts of Scandinavia. Uh, before uh, we started to uh, develop t uh, Trapped, um, and it came about when I met Balthasar Kormakur, who, who uh, by then had <coughs> had success uh, with a movie called Jar City uh, in uh, in Europe and and uh, several other places. And you could say uh, Jar City at the time, <coughs> it's made like in 2006, is, uh, is maybe uh, Iceland's uh, only contribution to, to the so-called Nordic Noir thing at the time. Um, and, uh, and we uh, decided to, to form uh, a company uh, Called RVK Studios, and and to try to develop a, a series, and uh, and this was in like 2012 when we started this, and this idea came up that um, that we would uh, turn it ar around uh, this one cop in a small town uh, and and uh, this thing about being trapped because of the weather is very much something we all know in uh, Iceland. <laughs> I grew up myself, I grew up in a small town and uh, we were very often trapped uh, and we couldn't get anywhere. Uh, and the papers wouldn't arrive. The daily papers, I remember especially, you got maybe a week of daily papers by Friday because it, the, uh, there was, we were always snowed in and there was no, no flights with, with the papers. And sometimes we, we didn't get any milk from Reykjavik. So, uh, and this idea came up that, that um, uh, 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 a, a, a body is found uh, in the town and and certainly there is a snowstorm and 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 the town gets trapped so this is both uh, a, a benefit for for the the police to to have um, the situation because uh, now the killer is probably trapped in town as well with with all the rest of the townspeople and um, and but but it's also bad because th this leaves uh, the local police alone with the investigation so uh, uh, so, so this creates the the uh, the atmosphere of, of paranoia, and and you know that I, I think uh, uh, though for those who who saw the first series uh, know what I'm talking about. Uh, so what what happened in 2012 was that I hired, uh, or me and Balthasar, we hired writers to to work on on uh, the first draft of the series uh, while meanwhile we we were were uh, trying to put the funding together uh, and uh, we we created like a bible for for the series um, and we kind of uh, wrote the whole series at least once you know uh, in in the script uh, in the scripts um, 
And then uh, we were having, but but we were still having trouble uh, finding the the money. We, uh, you know, first we we got RUV, the the national broadcaster in Iceland, which is a very small thing, and of course this is Iceland with population of only three hundred and forty thousand people, so the market is very small and uh, so we reached out to Scandinavia and we got uh, uh, something there but not enough uh, from the national broadcasters but uh, so we we knew that if we were uh, gonna make this series at all then we would need Germany and France uh, preferably as well because they were the, they are the biggest uh, in 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 uh, in Europe, and uh, so uh, after uh, uh, some failed attempts uh, with Germany, we got on board Dynamic Television, which is uh, um, uh, run by uh, Klaus Zimmermann. In, in Europe and Dan March in uh, the US, and they were uh, a start, uh, you know, like a startup company at the time. And um, Klaus had uh, worked with Atlantic in France and uh, had been an executive producer for series like Borgias and um, Borgia, actually the Tom Fontana one, and. Um, and the uh, transporter the series or something like that so he was like um, he was like an up and coming uh, uh, european producer and when uh, he came on board uh, things started to move actually uh, because he uh, he got us access into seti uh, f and uh, and ZDF liked the premise, and uh, we started to restructure the script. Um, the other writers that I started with in 2012, they had gone on to other other projects, and uh, uh, a British writer called Clive Bradley was he came on board, and we formed this wonderful writers international writers room. Um, with uh, Klaus and Clive and a friend's uh, script editor called Sonia Moyerson, who uh, and and the four of us we we kind of conceived the rest of of the series and um, and uh, very much what you uh, saw in the in the first season. So. How we, uh, and then uh, soon after that, uh, ZDF gave us the green light and France televisions came on board as well. So uh, this was in 2014 and uh, we started production in the end of that year. Uh, but the, the way we have worked uh, both um, on on trapped season one and 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 uh, now season two that will be uh, will be broadcast in the end of this year um, is like uh, we meet every two months the the writers room actually and we map out like two episodes at a time and and. Uh, so, so it's it's like a week or ten days or something that we meet each time, and map out like two episodes. And Clive goes to his office and write one, and I write one, and then we get all this together. And it takes us like two months or so to get the scripts of those two episodes good. And then we go on from there and, and start to map out the next two episodes. Um, the thing is, um, this is like, like a band I, I started. I, I, I come from music and I, I've, I, 
I, I, uh, my experience in, in music is not very uh, unsimilar to, to, to this, because uh, as, as a showrunner of, of the show, I feel like I have to form like uh, three bands. Uh, the first band is the writer's room. Um, and and uh, and that 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 is a, a very uh, um, uh, you know we, we need to uh, start we we spend like a year uh, on each series uh, mapping out and writing and then the second band is uh, the production which is uh, uh, very, w there, are, there are many members in the production band. Um, it's like a symphony orchestra, actually. Uh, and, and we need to, um, it's, a, it's like, a, you know, after, after the scripts are ready, we need, um, you know, I, I, my job is to go into the product, you know, talk to the production people and, um, and answer all those questions, you know, because you can get when, you know, when, when something we conceived in the writer's room uh, is, is very, you know, we, we think is, is great and, and the genius stuff and, and uh, then we present it to the production people, we get questions like, uh, why is this here on the page, you know, it doesn't make sense and we could never do this, etc. So I will, I of course have to uh, compromise and uh, sometimes I just change things in the script so we, it, it's easier to produce um, and things like that. Um, but, but usually uh, we are pretty true to the script but of course it's uh, sometimes it doesn't feel so, you know. It's it's like um, uh, two different worlds. First, it's the writing world, and then it's the filmmaking world. And we have like four directors with their opinions, and we have all those actors that need to have their um, perspective of, on things, and of course their input, their creative input, which is very uh, precious. For, for for me to be working with all those great actors. One of them is here, sitting, uh, who plays Agnes, uh, the, the lead character's wife. Um, and I and I enjoy very much this, this collaboration. Sometimes it's nightmarish, but still it's always gratifying, you know, in the end. Uh, but but then we um, uh, then the, the third band I form is in the editing room, uh, the, the post-production people. Um, and the, the networks, you know, RUV uh, and ZDF, which are our co-producers. Um, and sometimes it can be uh, uh, difficult, but, but of course in the end it's always, uh, it's a good collaboration in, on all aspects. Um, I think my experience really uh, with with this, because uh, you say it's a case study of the success of Trapped, <laughs> I, I feel like um, maybe if there is, because uh, I don't believe really that, that there is a formula or anything for for success, but I think if, if there is anything that, that made the first series a success was kind of how uh, the criteria was um, uh, kind of, it, it, you know, it, 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 it were, there were so many stages of approval, you know, it, it was like, uh, or, or, and, or, or we could maybe say, rather, it was so many stages of criticism that we got that we had to go through. The first stage is the writers uh, in the writer's room 
and a writer's room is kind of a circle of trust. It's like four people talking about where we should go with this and this character and this one. And all ideas have to come up, really. And you mustn't be afraid to come up with bad ones, because uh, from bad ideas we can get good ideas. So, uh, so it's like, uh, uh, yeah, kind of a circle of trust here, that, that uh, I can trust that if I come up with a bad idea that, that Clive or someone else in the room is not going to tell the whole world that I came up with a bad idea. So, uh, <laughs> so it's like, um, uh, and, and, uh, so, so, so we need this, so, so we, this is the first level of criticism there, of course, but but um, be, and we, we need to be unafraid to tell the other one that that uh, what they uh, their idea is not working, uh, etc. Then we uh, come up with a script and we get notes from each other uh, before we present it to uh, the production and of course our creator Balthasar Kornogor, who's very critical. And very creative as well, and 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 he has a very uh, sharp eye on on things, and uh, and uh, we we need to, that that is very um, beneficial to to have his vision and also to have his distance, you know, because. He has a distance while we are on, in the writer's room, and he can always uh, reflect on what we are doing by reading the scripts and, and giving us good notes. Uh, then uh, comes uh, the directors, the, the production people, and, and, uh, and they, of course, come up with all kinds of criticism or or ideas that we can use. Uh, I sometimes feel that my best notes come up when I take in in or actually in the production meetings when uh, we have the script and we are have you know the whole crew you know the head of all the departments the the. The wardrobe, the you know the 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 art director and everybody is there. The camera people, um, and and all everybody has read the script, but we are going through it bit by bit, scene by scene. The director and everybody, and I uh, usually have my printed out script with a with a pen, and. The, the, there always come up those big questions. Why is this like this? And for uh, for instance, in one of those production meetings, the wardrobe lady came up with a, a very simple question: uh, they, Does the the lead character have a ring? Mm -hmm. And I hadn't thought about it. Shit! Of course, he's divorcing his wife. And and of course, yeah. He and and he is in a limbo, and he's not letting go. And of course, he has the ring. So we 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 wrote a new scene for. I mean, we wrote into the scene between his wife and him that he still had the ring. And and she she mentioned it. You you still have the ring. And and he gets you know. Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, nervous about it, and and then, um, of course, and that that's a big thing in in the whole series, and we end the series with him taking off the ring because he has now decided to move on. This is this is gold. This is uh, to, to to just get that from the wardrobe lady and and the people from the production. It's it's something that that is very precious, and uh, and I I feel um, after after those production meetings I I do a rewrite, and uh, and uh, you know and that is of course uh, what what 
my job is very much about is it's it's a rewrite. I I I, um, I actually uh, as a writer I am not very much for first drafts. I I I need <laughs> I know they need to be written, but but I am uh, it, it's for my um, experience it's more like ditching. A, a, you know, a, a ditch, you know, or and, and or things like, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm not very much for for putting out first drafts, but as soon as there's a second draft, I am really uh, uh, flying. I, I, th this is my thing. Rewrites is my thing. I love to rewrite, and I love to, <laughs> love to change things and throw them away and and stuff like that, and r write new things. And that's, that's why I feel it's very beneficial, at least for me, to be a showrunner on set, which I, I, I did both on, on the first season and, and the second season, because there are always moments that come up that, that uh, um, we, we need to maybe restructure things, you know, with, with um, uh, some, something that com comes up with uh, the director or, or, or the actors or whatever. And I can tell you honestly that, that um, just like two, I mean, we, we are finishing episode, uh, season two now in the editing room, but uh, I'm still writing stuff. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, it never ends, really. We, we, we have one uh, day for, for shooting, uh, you know, like, like few scenes, and, and you know, I, I will be, we, we will be altering those scenes and probably be writing something new. It, it always, also always comes up, and also it, all, uh, it comes up in, in the, in the editing room, and we we sometimes rewrite stuff in the ADR. Uh, uh, this is this is just thing that uh, something that that just happens, and and uh, this is never. I mean, th this is always a huge task. You know, uh, a series is uh, is a, is an enormous task to to make. We always think that this one will be easy and. And things like that, but it never, it never is. Um, and and um, and if there is something easy going on, you will find out later that that was something was wrong. Uh, were wrong with that. <laughs> That's not the right thing in the process. It 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 is supposed to be hard, and you need to embrace that. So. Um, uh, maybe I'll, uh, I'll I'll talk a little bit about uh, season two. We um, uh, about you know we we had great success with with uh, season one, and it was sold in I think every territory in the world uh, except maybe for China. I'm not sure where where that is now. Uh, we we have trapped in Mongolia and uh, in many other uh, places, <laughs> and uh, and of course we have it here in in, in Spain, uh, uh, Movie Star Plus, I think, yeah, Movie Star Plus uh, is is playing it, and 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 of course it will be the season uh, season two will be sh there broadcast there in in uh, uh, this winter coming winter um, and uh, we had great success um, uh, with uh, the first success real success we got was was France where they they started to I mean uh, I, I really <coughs> should first mention Iceland because you know we had like 90 percent of the population watching the the, the series it was uh, ridiculous, actually. Ninety uh, percent. Uh, there was actually there came numbers in the news that uh, water usage uh, while trapped was being broadcast uh, dropped uh, 
because people decided not to go to the toilet while while uh, Trump was being broadcast. But as soon as the episode was over, everybody the water uses skyrocketed. Um, and then uh, Norway took it on like a week after Iceland, and uh, and it was a good success there. But the real numbers came in France um, when five million people tuned in on the first episode, which was huge. Um, and that year, Trap was the the biggest. Uh, um, foreign, uh, you know, non-French uh, series uh, shown in France. Um, and then we had BBC uh, Four in in UK, and they were very, uh, they, they got like one and a half million each episode, and uh, for uh, which was very big for them for a very small station and uh, and the British press uh, were very enthusiastic about the, about the, about the show and we also had a very good success in in Germany uh, there was like um, three million that tuned, tuned in on on the first night uh, so uh, we uh, we uh, of course started after this to to talk about series two, but we might have been a little late doing it. We we decided to finish the first one uh, and and just see how it would go. And uh, when it turned out to be such success, we we started to to. Um, S uh, develop uh, season two, uh, but but it took uh, a long time, and uh, <clears throat> and uh, it wasn't until the fall of 2016 that that the original writers room came together due to all kinds of uh, scheduling uh, difficulties. So uh, we uh, started shooting series two in the fall of 2017. And we have been shooting it all winter, and uh, uh, last winter, <clears throat> and and then we are now in the editing stage, and and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it seems things are looking good, but but uh, it's it's a different premise. It's uh, still we we are in the small town, you know, from from series one, but we are not trapped. Because of weather anymore, we we uh, we tend to look at the trappedness as um, something that that is within the characters, especially the main character who is always trapped within his own uh, limbo uh, thing. You know, uh, <laughs> it's very very typical Icelandic male actually. Um, so uh, I, and I think many male characters this that age uh, can identify with him, um, and women love him. He's so sexy, they say, <laughs> in the British press at least. And <laughs> but um, so, uh, but but this is uh, this is we we are telling a more political story maybe in in uh, Trap Two. And you will probably see some snippets of of those things in uh, the trailer I'm about to show you. I think I don't have much more to tell you, so I uh, maybe uh, I should we should show the trailer and then take some questions, maybe. Okay, okay. here you are. Father Island. Vinna 
Allir sama stað. Við eigum von á mjög mikilvægan gesti. Þeir eru að fjárfesta í álverinu. American Aluminium. Það er eitthvað við þessa virkjun. Það versta, það er ekki búið. Það er ilska í þessari fjölskyldu sem þú giftir þig í. Hvað er upp á fjallu? Ég segja að það sé vatnið. Það er eitur í vatninu. Og það er allt komið frá þessum vannskotast kapitalistum sem það eru að stækka virkjunina á. Ölvunin er að færast yfir allan bæginn hérna. It's easy being gay in Iceland. In Ghana, you could be killed. It is illegal. Þeim er aldið sem hálf gerum föngum að það í þessari virkjun. Hann er skiptur aðlegun, nýðurlegnar og vannvirtur. Og hvað gerir svona maður? Hann grýpur til vopna. Einu vopnana sem hann á. Og munu fleiri grýpa til vopna? Ó, já. Þessi að þetta mál verða aftur í hetjan sem allir elska að andri mér. Við gefum einnar ágjörð. Það er best að íhuga það vandlega að játa. Það geti skila sér í vægar í dómi. Það er létt fyrst að faðir mælti. Graceful. Um, I wanted to ask about the writer's room a little bit when you came into season two. After that success in season one, was it a, a quiet room or did you have to do something to kind of shake things up? How was that? No, I, I feel it was just like the old days. I think we were pretty happy. You know, everybody was happy. Of course, you, you don't uh, have much contact with the writer's room while you are producing. You know, they, they kind of drift off and go somewhere else. But, and, and you know, start work on other projects. But I think all of us had distanced ourselves enough to be just, yeah, fine. Nobody was asking me questions. Why did you change this or what? You know, it, it was just professional and, and friendly. So, so we were all very happy going into season two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No questions? Uh, you said that uh, first season of Trout was uh, like crafted of over criticism and approvals. Yeah. And how this change your, your, your thoughts about season two because you feel pretty relaxed after... Yeah, you know, well, 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 well. Uh, it, it's never uh, over, you know, <laughs> this, <laughs> this thing. I think uh, we, we put more criticism on ourselves uh, uh, in season two than, than the, the season one because it's, uh, it's always, you know, we, we, we really never want to cheat our audience or, or, or think we got it made, you know. So, so we were very aware of that. Mm -hmm. So, and, and uh, I think our, our inner system never allows us mm -hmm. to, to relax. So it wasn't as hard as the first season, but it, it was hard it's, enough. It's harder. It's, second season was harder than the first season. Really? Yeah. That's how it is. <laughs> Lorenzo, no te había visto. <laughs> Hola. Yes, one question. As a writer, uh, the change of the Icelandic television landscape has changed a little bit because now you have a new pay-per-view channel, Simki, I think. They made Stella Blomquist. It means that you have more opportunities to write or the talent is so thin that probably you're going to spread out and things are going to lose. What's your point of view about that? Well, um, 
Yeah, it's it's uh, of course there are more broadcasters to to uh, order things, but but still we never can can get past that in order to make a, a drama series of this volume of this uh, standard, you always need foreign money. You know, you always need money from abroad because. The, the the Icelandic broadcasters are so tiny that that we don't get more than maybe ten percent of the whole budget from them. So uh, it's always a struggle to to get a series uh, made. And it was also, I mean, we had to struggle a bit to get series two of Trapped made, but it of course was a little easier than before because we had success. In front of us, but but it's uh, yeah I I, I uh, but and the talent of course there, there are not many writers uh, in in Iceland but but they are getting more and more and and uh, we 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 just try to look for new talent everywhere and uh, one thing is is that which is a very positive thing that <coughs> although we don't have too many screenwriters in Iceland. We have uh, a fair amount of good novelists, and and we can and and they have turned out some of them to to be pretty good good screenwriters as well. So uh, so yeah, things are not looking too bad. The budget. What was the bad budget of of Trapped? Season one, I think it was seven million euros, and season two is uh, something above that number. But uh, I think maybe ten or twenty percent higher. I, I'm not sure. But uh, oh, and, and of course, everything has escalated in in Iceland because we have a tiny currency called the krona, which is <laughs> <laughs> which is something that. When there's lots of tourists in Iceland, the krona goes up, you know, and, and uh, everything gets more expensive. So we are kind of shooting us in, in the foot here. <laughs> um, working with other international partners doesn't make, um, doesn't make like, um, to have an impact in the stories that you write. Do you feel that the essence of, I don't know, like a style um, from Iceland can be yeah well that's my job very much to to uh, ensure the Icelandic authenticity you know uh, and uh, and of course we are there are more of us uh, in the production and uh, Balthasar and everybody uh, when we feel something is false coming from this British guy then we <laughs> <laughs> then we correct it. <laughs> He, he, for instance, uh, in the in the first season, he 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 wrote, everybody is is uh, putting uh, out their umbrellas. And there's there, people don't use umbrellas in Iceland because of the wind, <laughs> stuff like this, you know. And and I remember he 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 was uh, in in some early draft he he had uh, the lead character go home and pour himself a glass of whiskey and that doesn't happen in Iceland uh, not either because it's like if you do that in a working day you're an alcoholic <laughs> so we didn't want to put him, <laughs> have him as an alcoholic in, in Britain they do it all the time <laughs> but but then we changed it into milk which I think was pretty good <laughs> We do the same in Galicia, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> ¿Alguna pregunta más? Aquí. Uh. Uh, how far do you see the season? Um, how, you far, how far do you see it all going? Have you decided on a cut-off point to the idea or a spin-off? Uh, no ideas of spin-off, no. But uh, we might be thinking about next season we are not giving anything out but uh, I mean we are not ruling it out you know it, it, but it all, it all depends on how how season two will go and uh, but but we are yeah we are kind of open now 
Bueno, pues, eh, thank you for your generosity and sharing all this information. It's not very common, it's uncommon. So, thank you very much.